All right, welcome back to Physio Fitness, and we've got a clinic one for you today on ankles. Now, this is for people with stiff ankles that have lost range into dorsiflexion. Now, that's pretty common after ankle sprains and ankle injuries, and a lot of the time we see people who have just missing 10 or 20% of the ankle range, and that's what's affecting them when they run or play sport because the stiffness gives them pain again. So what we do in the clinic, when someone's got a stiff ankle, might be a chronic ankle that's really stiff and they've lost this range here, or they're stiff in that range, they get to that point and they're stiff through the ankle. Maybe they've lost some range through the back as well because when you, when you don't do enough dorsiflexion, you also get a bit tight through the back of the capsule there. We mobilize that ankle to try and improve the dorsiflexion range so when they run, or when they go and play a sport, they don't have that stiffness component and then they stop getting pain. So I'm going to show you today what we do and then I'm going to show you what exercises and stretches you need to do at home and how you're going to replicate what I do at home. So for this exercise here, or treatment if you like, what we do is we're going to move the whole foot in an anterior to posterior direction. Now this is really classic physio one-on-one, -on -one. it's the sort of thing we learned in our sort of first year of uni. But there are tricks with this. When you basically do an AP, you've got to have a really good grip on the tatus because it's the tatus that you're moving. Now, if you know your anatomy, the fibula is here, the tatus is here, the tibia is here, right? The fibula sits a little bit lower than the tibia, okay, the malleolus. So when you put the block underneath, now I'll just roll a towel up for that. When you put the block under, Little trick is just angle it on the same angle as where that tip and fib is. So you're not having it sort of sitting here and blocking the fibula. Because if you look at where that tibia is, if you block down here, you're gonna lose some problem, some movement there. So I would just roll it up nice and tight and just put on a little bit of an angle. Now, it's all in the grip with this one. Use a towel, it's much nicer on the patient. Sometimes you have to double that towel up if they're very sensitive, so if they're an acute phase where this is a little bit swollen, a little bit sensitive from the injury, you might have to double that up because the grip or here might be too sore. But if they're chronic, you can probably get away with that. I would put that, imagine you're going to put that over the talus and that web part is where your hand is going. Now you don't go and squeeze the bejesus out of it. This is just a grip so you don't slip and your thigh here controls how much dorsiflexion you're doing. So what I tend to do is rest one hand here if you can see this and then get my hand as close to that joint as I possibly can and then get into a position where my arm is the line of pull of push directly through the joint. If I push back from here, I'm gonna shunt it into up into the sort of tetracural joint, which is what I don't wanna do. I wanna go on the line of that joint. Now, as you move into more dorsiflexion, that line sort of changes. So you're gonna to have to have your shoulder right over your hand, and that also gives you the same sort of rules as you lock the hand, lock the wrist here, lock the elbow, lock the shoulder, and drop the body. So I'm not pushing down through my arm, I'm actually locking the arm and then dropping the body. Okay, which is much nicer for the client because you can really feel the depth with that and you're going through in a straight AP direction until you feel that tension or until you see that person start wincing a little bit there, they feel either a little bit of pain starting or the stretch is just too much. So you want to stay in that range where you're just dropping in, a bit of a stretch at the end and then back away, you okay with that? Yeah. And this movement gives them the glide, if you imagine that's your tib and fib, and this is your tailor sitting underneath the, with the foot, it gives them this movement, okay? Because as they move into dorsiflexion, that joint doesn't just sort of hinge like that, it slides and rolls back, all right? So I'm doing the roll back or the glide movement to stretch the tissues that are connected in here, stretch all the tissues that surround that that have tightened up. Does that make sense? So when I, AP them like this, I'm giving that joint movement that it's lost, if you like. So the componentry of the AP movement of the joint, the talus as it slides underneath the tip and the fib, that's the movement I want to stretch out. And then they'll find when they stand up, 
they've got more dorsiflexion because as they move through, there's less resistance in the soft tissues and that helps it move better. So when they handle load and land and when they're running, if that stiffness is gone, they won't get as much pain. Happy days. So that's the AP. Now, when you want to get to end range, you're just going to have to go into way more dorsiflexion. Now, you can do it in two ways. One is you basically come right over the client like that. And now I'm going to have to push down that way. So I'm going to have to push backwards because the joint angle's changed. So I'm basically APing them but pushing them that way. You okay with that? And that feels probably a bit stronger because I'm right up at the joint end range. Again, I don't want to be pinching in the front, so you don't want to be right to the top end, but from that position and just drive down and back. Pretty forceful stuff, but again, that's for people who can handle it. And that will give that last end range, that last little bit of dorsiflexion stretch which, which they need. But you can also do that in standing. So if you have a jump up, Claire. This is, listen, it's a little bit harder, but it's also quite good because when they're doing it in weight bearing, you're getting a way more sort of effect of what they're doing when they're running. So if like they're weight bearing and they're having problems, this is a really good one for them to do. Just face me this way a little bit. If you can see this. So what I'm going to try and do is actually block that talus. So effectively I'm gliding it back because what she's going to do is then glide forward. So she's going to try and push that knee forward and I'm blocking through here and I'm pushing backwards as she goes forwards and then she backs away. So it's almost like she's doing as much movement, much effort as I am, if you like, because if she moves forward and that's not blocked, that talus is tight, it's just going to come forward. It's not going to get that movement there. I wouldn't go and put your fingers on like that. That's just too tender. You've really got to use your palms. So you've got to be sitting right back and lock again this as much as you can and just drive that forward as she comes forward into here. You feel okay with that? And you just got to be careful she's not cheating. If she's trying to get more dors dorsiflexion, she's probably going to push her knee inwards or into medial. You don't want that. So just make sure she's sort of staying knee over foot. And he just, he just drives it forward. She has to keep her heel down, so don't let her heel, heel come up. And you push that back. And I just do repetitions like that. The same amount of repetitions that you would do APing is you're now doing it sort of in reverse. Okay, now this is quite a nice one to do, especially sort of that end stage ankle rehab where they're just trying to search that last few degrees of dorsiflexion. Depends on the sport, of course. But this is also the same sort of thing we're going to do for homework. So let's show you how you're going to do that at home. All right, so to do that one at home, what you need is a solid power band and an anchor point and a box of the rays or you know a sofa or something that's high. Now, when you this point here, this has got to be anchored here and it can't move up and down. So that anchor point needs to be lower than the box or the height, the sofa, what are you going to use to put your foot up on? So Claire, put that around your foot. So if you imagine, this is the same sort of principle as what I was showing before, holding that tailor. So now the band is holding the talus, okay? So the band is driving that AP glide that way of the talus and she's then, for, then going to push her knee forward, which brings her into dorsiflexion with a AP glide. So imagine that is my hand, and that is the movement that she needs to work on. Again, try not to aim to get the pinch here. Very crucial, and a shout out to Kelly Sturet from the Ready State for this, because this one I completely stole from him. You've got to keep that band sitting below the malleolus. As he stated, a lot of people, the band slips up, and that's not going to do any AP glide of the tail. That's actually going to do the reverse, which is a completely opposite thing of what we want happening. So you've got to make sure that band is sitting right down underneath the tip and fib. That's why that anchor point has to be lower. And if anything, this box needs to be probably a little bit higher. So very crucial that you do that. Otherwise, you're just going to do the completely the wrong thing. So have that sitting below. The two bony points have it really tucked under there and nice and heavy band on there so it just doesn't move. Um, can you imagine if this was down even further, you'd get a way better effect down here. Okay, so if that was really anchored down there, that's a really helpful position to be in. Because when she bends her knee forward, it's just really giving a nice glide. You feel okay with that? Yeah. And again, watch the pinching in the front. Don't go to the point where it pinches, but that sort of repetition range, again, is the same sort of thing. Aim for about sort of 30 or so pushing forwards, maybe two or three sets of that to help with that dorsiflexion range. Okay. 
Hope that helps.